still in Sacramento. Yeah. Yeah, Old Town Sacramento. Old town. And it's really cool because this week we're going into the California State Railroad Museum, oh, which is awesome. right there on the pier at the right. river in Old Town Sacramento, where we've been staying on the riverboat and so on. But this is an amazing museum. It's one of America's greatest railroad museums. No kidding. The California State Railroad Museum at Sacramento. One of the really cool locomotives on display here is Central Pacific No. 1, also known as the Leland Stanford. Leland Stanford was one of the four investors that helped build the Central Pacific. Last week, if you recall, we looked where the Central Pacific was built up over Donner's Summit. This is the Donner's Summit Tunnel. And Engine No. 1 here worked on that construction. It was built in Philadelphia, then disassembled and sent around Cape Horn on a ship, then up the river on a riverboat to Sacramento, and then reassembled only a few hundred feet from where it currently stands. Now the Central Pacific did become part of the Southern Pacific later on, and in 1899 the railroad saw fit to give this locomotive to Leland Stanford's wife, who then displayed it at Stanford College, now Stanford University. Now this is Southern Pacific Number 1. It actually started off as Central Pacific Number 3, also known as the C.P. Huntington, named after another one of the investors on the Central Pacific. It's a really small engine, but as they bought it during the Civil War, it was about the biggest thing they could lay hands on. It too was brought around Cape Horn and reassembled a few hundred feet from where it currently resides. Now both of these engines ended up being donated to the Pacific Coast Chapter of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society. That collection forms the backbone of the collection here in Sacramento. The C.P. Huntington is also really unusual because it's a bicycle. That is to say, it has only two drive wheels. It's a four, two, four wheel configuration. Really, really weird. Now, if you like really small and really, really early locomotives, it's hard to not fall hopelessly in love with the C.P. Huntington. But keep in mind, the Southern Pacific did run some really, really big steam locomotives as well. This is a cab forward. In fact, it's the only surviving cab forward. On the Southern Pacific, because of the long snow sheds and tunnels up over the mountains, when they ran locomotives up through there, it would just about smoke the engine crew to death. So they came up with the clever idea of putting the steam locomotive on backwards with the tender still at the back, but the cab at the front. And because these were oil burning locomotives, you could get away with that by just piping the oil from the tender all the way around to the front of the engine where the firebox is. These things became something of a legendary icon on the Southern Pacific. What a strange looking engine with the business end of the front of the locomotive at the back and the cab of the locomotive at the front and the engine crew sitting up here by the boiler facing backwards. But it worked out brilliantly considering that these are such a large engine and produce so much smoke you can understand why the train crews really appreciated this. Look at the size of the firebox. I mean it's the size of a garage. Now this is North Pacific Coast number 12, also known as the Sonoma. It's a beautifully restored 3-foot gauge Baldwin 440 built in 1876. There aren't many of these surviving, although quite a few were built. Interestingly, it's an exact duplicate of Dan Markoff's engine, the Eureka. They're almost indistinguishable from each other other than the names. They even have the same pinstriping. In an upcoming show, we will look at that locomotive. We did do a show a while back on Dan's passenger car. Speaking of passenger cars, check out the beauty behind the Sonoma. This is Virginia and Truckee number 13, the Empire. 
The California State Railroad Museum has three Virginia and Truckee engines. Really nice. Now, if you remember, we did a show just a while back on the Virginia and Truckee engines at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. The California State Railroad Museum has three Virginia and Truckee engines to the four that they have over at the Nevada State Museum. But the empire here has been beautifully restored, which is great because it's a beautiful, beautiful early engine. Now this is the Genoa number 12, the second Virginian Truckee engine in the California State Collection. The third engine is called the Bulker, and it's outside, it's unrestored, it's in one of the train sheds being well taken care of, but someday it'll be restored. The Virginia and Truckee was known as the Queen of the Short Lines, and it's amazing, it was just a tiny little railroad running between Reno and Virginia City, but an incredible number of its passenger cars and locomotives have survived. The museum has three 1930s to 40s vintage passenger cars and they've got them all set up as though they're in daily service. And this one's even mounted on a motion base so it feels like you're actually going down the tracks. It lets you see and even feel what it would have been like traveling on a train back in those days. It's really, really fun. This is the sleeping car, of course. And it has a private compartment here for the very wealthy. And the dining car. They have a full-on dining car set up here with the kitchen staff. The railroads always lost money on their dining cars, but it gave them a way to attract more passengers by having a really opulent dining car so that people would want to ride their train and not the competition's. At the museum, they also have some of the great chinaware that was used on these cars on display. Now up on the third floor, they have toy trains and model trains. This is an amazing collection, especially of early tin-type model trains and toy trains. Check this stuff out. I, I just want to dig it all out and start playing with it. Now it's undoubtedly true that a lot of the model railroaders from today really got their start with a toy train back when they were just a kid. But I sort of suspect that seeing trains driving around was also something of an inspiration. But whatever the inspiration, these days a lot of people have been driven to the high, high art of screwing around by building amazing models, making them as realistic as humanly possible. Also up on the third floor is Nevada Short Line number one. It was actually built for the Utah Northern, but it found its way over to the Nevada Short Line. It's up here in the rafters as though it's on a truss bridge of some kind. And boy, does that look cool up here. And they've got a couple of narrow gauge cars for it to pull. This little narrow gauge caboose was the property of Ward Kimball and ran on his Grizzly Flats Railroad. How about that? There is a lovely little show on that railroad, by the by. Now, as cool as the California State Railroad Museum already is, they have been trying to enlarge it for a number of years, adding a whole second museum called the Museum of Railroad Technologies. And that project is finally moving forward and hopefully we'll be opening in about five years, maybe the year 2020. Well, there you
you have it. Right. The California State Railroad that Museum. That was fabulous. Wow. It's wow. so cool. So that that to look cab at. forward locomotive right. is amazing. Oh my. I think the the little CP Huntington. I just like that little bitty engine. It's the teeniest, goofiest little thing. Right. A four two zero. I mean, you just don't run into those things ever. And, right. And it's just it's just really cool. It is. It's just a really cool little engine. Right. But the whole museum is oh, really amazing. Absolutely, the diner car was really. Cool. And they're enlarging it. They're making it bigger. That's Once right. uh, in a couple of years, do. it'll probably be more than twice the size it currently is. Plan on two days to go through it then, because yeah, you can look at everything. We pretty much blew a whole day oh, just easy, wandering around easy. in there and destroyed our feet doing it. So right. it was worth it. Oh, well worth well it. Well worth it. Yeah. So anyway, do check out the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento. And check out the website, toymantelevision.com. And you can go to Facebook and you can like us there, Toy Man Television. Or you can just simply subscribe to the YouTube channel that's because that's the easiest thing that's you can do. Because it's that blue button right there. You click on it, you're subscribed, you're done. It's a piece of cake. Right. And then you'll be notified every time we go off and screw around and upload a movie, which is actually every Sunday, every so it's Sunday. Not, not too hard to figure out. Well, we're not sure how you found this fun movie on the Internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here again in one week with some more massive screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.